people are often really surprised that it's such a beautiful, beautiful place and that our coffee is delicious and that the customer service is good. And I think when people hear that we're a coffee shop that's employing young people that have previously been homeless or on the streets, they get this stereotype that, oh, it's going to be this really dumpy place and the coffee is going to be bad. And the only reason that we're going there is to support this cause, which is good. But I love it that Street Bean offers employment for young people, but it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place for people to come and have coffee and it's delicious coffee and it's a great community of people that are there. What we're doing is we're having to make sure that every cup of coffee that we serve is good, that our customer service is great. We need to be really intentional about telling our story and differentiating ourselves from other coffee places and, and letting folks know why they should spend their money at Street Bean and not someplace else. When one of our customers comes in and asks for one of our baristas by name, or another customer says, you know, this barista right here makes the best cup of coffee, and I, I look to see if he's working, that's success. It's success that we have so many people in the community that actually want to buy a cup of coffee at Street Beam, and it's being made by young people that were previously homeless or on the street, and they don't even know that Street Bean is any different. They just think, this is a beautiful place. I love this place. And then they find out, wow, you're also training young people and you're a nonprofit. I love that. That's successful. I think it's really compelling that uh, Linda is a servant before she's a leader. She really just wants to make coffee and serve these kids. And she's a leader because these kids need something to help them exit street life. Uh, they need a transition point, uh, job skills. Issues of poverty and homelessness are really complicated. There's not one quick fix and I think that's what's so challenging is that there are, I think all of us want to see homelessness alleviated and if you see somebody that doesn't have a job you want to give them an opportunity. People are very generous that way and I've seen a lot of people that have hired kids that are on the street or hired homeless people and they've really gotten burned by that and and I think it leaves a really bad taste in their mouth. It's like I I gave everything I had to this person, but they weren't able to take advantage of it. Linda inspires me because she has a huge passion for working with children and helping the community and helping these children get up and off the streets and onto their feet so they can also help the community. I think sometimes I'm a reluctant leader because the responsibility of it can get to be overwhelming. I think as a woman too, I think it's challenging to be a leader, oftentimes it demands everything of who you are, and I still want to be able to be present for my, for my kids and my husband, my community, my family. I'm inspired by Linda's energy and her enthusiasm for coffee and for working with youth, and the relationships she builds with her customers, her vendors. Um, she knew everyone's name that came into her coffee shop, and she'd greet the people she didn't know, and you'd you got this feeling like she'd know their name the next time they came in, whether it was a, a day, a week, or a month from now. I think sometimes it's difficult to integrate business and social work because I think oftentimes there's some different philosophies, but I just think it's critical. And I think when you can do it well, it can be really great because I think in business you have some great tested principles of how to do things efficiently and effectively and to work really well. I think social work, there's a lot of great relational practices and communication practices, and I think if you can meld those two together, you can be very successful. Linda's taught me that it's all about selflessness, and it's all about thinking about others and who you want to help uh, develop themselves and how you can improve their lives. We wanted to give young people a realistic experience of interviewing for a position. So we were conscious in not just selecting five people to take the spots. And so when we decided on who those five young people were, I had to tell the other 14 that they didn't get the job. And I know that some people think, well, that's part of life, you need to get used to disappointment. But to have to tell that to young people that have been disappointed their whole lives, that have been rejected their whole lives, that at a place that they feel welcomed and loved, virtually their family rejects them and they don't want them to work there, was absolutely gut-wrenching. It was awful. I sobbed. It was, it was horrible. And so um, I think that's the challenge of Street Bean is that I have kids coming in all the time that want to work there. And we only have a certain amount of spots. And, um, and that's just the reality. And, and the reality is, is that folks on the margins 
lack a lot of those opportunities. And that's why it's so great, folks that are in business, if they really, I think, um, let's see, that's why business has a great opportunity to make an impact because you have the power to be able to hire people that otherwise wouldn't be hired.